Hello everyone, welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For today, five things learned about the URC season. We are at the end of the season and we're now time to sort of reflect on the season that was and the season that could be next season and what kind of maybe needs to change, what are some of the, the positives, some of the negatives of the of the tournament, and just kind of the, 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 the feeling about it. And, and I think that this has been another incredibly, incredibly um, successful um, season. And I, and I think that... You know, I think I think we've we've really stumbled onto something pretty big and pretty epic uh, in the URC. I, I think it's only going to grow, um, and I think that it's got all the right ingredients to make an absolute world class tournament. And now it's just about trying to get right and just trying to sort of solve some of the issues to really make it truly world class. Um, so these are sort of my five takeaways. Obviously, everybody will have their different ones, and there'll be far more than just five. So let me know what yours are down in the comments below. Please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well and without any further ado let's move on to number one right so we know that wales rugby is is in a cross at the moment and 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 it's really not in a good place and there's you know there's major sponsors pulling out um, over the administration and there are so many there are just more the problems than there are solutions right now in wales rugby now it's frustrating you know because as you know, as much as you know, we sort of lost. You know, I think, oh well, it's fine. The Ireland, the Irish, and the SSI just play against each other and be competitive, and you know, you know, and uh, Glasgow will throw in a bit of, uh, of 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 competitiveness as well as you know, advance on. We want this this league to be as good as possible, which means we want the best players in the league. We want the best teams in the league. You know, we want a league where we've got you know sixteen teams, which are all not massively far away. Obviously, a Leinster is always going to be stronger than a Zebra, for example. Lens is going to be stronger than a Lions. But we need the Welsh sides to, 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 to step up. We need the Welsh sides to get better. We need the Welsh sides to keep their players because we want to play against international quality players week in, week out. You know, you want to be able to play against Dan Bigger, for example, or Lee Halfpenny, or, you know, a, a Justin Tipperick. You know, now he's injured, but, you know, um, like a Tafa Fadatow and stuff like that, Liam Williams. You want to be able to play against these guys week in, week out. And unfortunately, a lot of the, the, the youngsters and a lot of the, 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 the top, top players for Wales are all moving on because of the issue. And there's no doubt about the fact that, you know, we look at where they finish and the fact that not a single one made the top, you know, top eight, top off the table. And, you know, three out of the four bottom spots were occupied by well sides. It's, we want that to try and change because it's annoying because, you know, for example, Osprey's had a really good season in Europe, for example, didn't really replicate it in, um, in the URC. And we'd like to see more from the Welsh sides. So every league's always going to have one or two teams which don't really compete, uh, and that's fine. You know, I think that's that's quite normal. I think that's pretty standard. But I do think that Zebra uh, this season were exceptionally bad, and not really good enough to warrant being in the league. I think is the frustration. And you know, no one's going to sit there and sit there and say, you know, oh well, we may, there should be removed. We need to be replaced. You know, for example, I'm not going to sit there advocating that another South African side comes and replaces them and stuff like that. Because you do need to grow Italian rugby, and you know, you've got to add the support. Eighteen games, eighteen losses. You know, um, scoring three hundred forty-three, the, the fewest amount of points, and conceding two hundred points more than the next worst defense. They were not even beginning like beginning to be competitive. They were 13 points behind 15th place. I don't mind a team that can't compete, but they've got to be winning two or three games. They've got to be making sure that they can at least, at the very least, beat a team four or five places above them. And Zebra looked like a side which couldn't beat a, a, you know, a school side of the season. And I know that they're making some interesting signings ahead of next season. I'm very keen to see what they do with them. But um, they were a very big disappointment this season. And hopefully next season they will be a lot better. Now, this was not a dig at the at the Pro 12 or the Pro 14, um, but I think that the missing ingredient to to putting this competition on on level par with top 14, with Super Rugby, with Premiership has been the addition of the SA sides. There is no doubt that the competition has taken a massive step up with the quality, with the commercial value, and I think it truly is a world class tournament at the moment. I I personally think. It could even be better than the Premiership right now. Not necessarily as, you know, your best team is better than the Premiership best team and stuff like that. Maybe, you know, if you go team by team by team, Premiership might still be stronger. But I think in terms of a product, I, I think it's as strong. I think financially it's only going to grow as well. And I think it's got far more appeal because of the, you know, the the the, the, the four different shields, the six different nations, you know, all uh, 
uh, or, or represent or, 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 or represent it. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a really, really interesting to see how this competition grows uh, because I think that there's so much international flavor in it. I mean, there's there's players from all over the world, but more important, there's teams from all over the world um, in it. So I do think the addition to Sefka sides definitely made it a lot more competitive. The fact that we had, uh, you know, Storm was being in back-to-back -back finals, you know, three Sefka sides making it in each, you know, each, each year and making the playoffs. Um, so there's no doubt that they've literally made it more competitive, but I think as a product, they have genuinely made it pretty world class. Now, this is more than just the logistics thing. For the Saturn teams, it is a logistics thing. You know, we we heard horror stories about the Lions traveling issues that they had, about the food that they were eating when they traveled, uh, you know, about having to travel economy class and, and a lot of these players really struggling and stuff like that. But what for me has been interesting has the home advantage the way that, you know, has been huge. And we kind of expect that to continue to be the case. But this is why, like, for example, the uniqueness of the competition is in that in September or October, for example, or let's say December, you know, you are going and playing from South Africa, which is can be anything in the sort of 30 degree region, incredibly hot, hotter than, you know, a lot of people have ever played rugby in because we traditionally didn't play rugby in December. And you're now going over and playing in wet, cold, snowy conditions. It's it's incredible the kind of the level, the challenges that this competition brings. And it's going to be, it's going to be a very interesting obstacle for the, for the teams trying to adapt to being able to adapt to different conditions, different types of surfaces, different temperatures and stuff like that. So logistically, there's obviously still a massive challenge to try to get that right. But for me, it's been the more sort of the, the adaptability of the teams and the playing conditions to really be able to embrace traveling to Italy, to Ireland, to Scotland, to Wales, to South Africa, and how different every single one of those destinations can be. This is the most important thing. We have got a competition that the fans are behind. There's no doubt that the URC as a concept has been bought in by the fans and they're, and they're in for it. You know, we, the, 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 the 5,000, two to 5,000 Munster fans that traveled down to the final, you know, the, 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 the sold out uh, DHL stadium. We've had some, so many moments across the, the tournament and the league that, that has been such sort of standout that there's no doubt that the fans maybe were a bit, uh, you know, maybe a year ago were quite apprehensive maybe about the whole thing. Weren't entirely sure whether they liked it, whether there was the right sort of thing to do. This year, I think you could basically say the fans are happy. I don't think there are any South African fans really, or very little, very few South African fans who are sitting there going really miss Super Rugby. I think most of them have now been converted and saying, this is the league for us. I think uh, it's been incredible to see the Irish, um, you know, reception that the South African teams have had, Scottish ones as well. Uh, I think the Italian teams have also enjoyed having us in around. Uh, it seems to be quite a lot of opposition from sort of quite a large Welsh contingent, but I think that's probably got to do a lot more with their issues than really us. Uh, but generally, I think that it has been a very welcome addition from the, from the South African sides. And I do think that um, as a competition, it, people are people are interested. And, and that's kind of the hardest thing is to generate that interest, to, to generate a fan base that are loyal and love the competition. And I think they've gotten that very right. So credit goes to the organizers. And I think, you know, I like the fact that they continue to try and to innovate. They're talking about new ideas. They might not do it all, but, you know, even just having a conversation about, you know, maybe we need a draft system. Just that kind of thing that, you know, that the organizers are constantly thinking about how do we make sure this product that is the URC does not get stale? How do we continue improving it? How can we make it better all the time? And, and, I, and I personally have faith in the union and, and, the, and the body that's running it, which is not always the case when it comes to competitions. Certainly didn't have the same feeling about the Super Rugby and Sansa. Uh, you know, I kind of felt like they didn't really know what they were doing. This sort of, uh, you, know, you know, this respect, you know, you've seen some of the small things that they do. I think they've got their, their, their fingers on the pulse. I think they've got, the eye, they've got their ears to the ground. And I think that they really take a lot of feedback that they get and, and really try to action it, which is really, really positive. Uh, so I'm very happy as a South African after URC season i think the lions should have made playoffs so that makes me straight as a lions fan but as a South African and as a rugby fan another great season really enjoying it and cannot wait for next season let me know what you think down in the comments below that smash like on the video subscribe to the channel as well uh, thank you very much for watching my name is steven and i'll chat to you soon